The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman on this Friday, uh, the 27th of May. This is the Tiger Technician's Hour. I'd love to hear from you, 1-877-927-6648. Thousand two hundred thirty-four thirty-two thousand eight sixty-nine. 832 Sorry, this is Technical Friday. So I'm going to go through all these things uh, very uh, from the questions. I got just a, a ton of questions. Some yesterday I didn't quite get to because I only saw them after the show was finished. So let me just go through one at a time. Why did I go along for subscribers to the opening call? Um, why did I keep going along and then why did I stay uh, long? Uh, and that's the question. So after each one of these, I don't want to go through the, this part of it. Uh, I don't want to take too much time. But this particular candle here, this green candle at this low with a long wick, uh, uh, half half of it of which is a body on the upside and a tiny little wick at the top, I call it a Roman candle. When it occurs at the top and you can see it here in the S&P, this is the candle. When it occurs at the top, at, at the high of 4818.62, the S&P made a high. And this is the same candle that we saw actually one or two bars later after the October high. It was actually the next month back in 2007. I take it very seriously because if there's a trade halfway into the wick on a shorter time basis, then you're bound to test the low. Well, and it's also been and many times a serious top. So within that context, this particular pattern that I'm looking at here, in the Dow, when it becomes green at a low, not a high, at a potential low, that's where you can get a pretty decent bounce. And we've had five of them. The last one I called a Chapman Wave. Um, it wasn't 100% the way I like it, but it was in the category of the Chapman Wave Roman candle, long wick, tiny, tiny wick at the top, long wick at the bottom, and a body half to two-thirds above the wick low. So I loved it, and the next day we went long. And on all of these pullbacks, we've actually been going long. The main thing should have just been staying, going short, staying short, and that's it. Anyway, we had done the run in the beginning, then got stopped out, never got back in. And then after that, we got these longs. And funnily enough, most of the longs on the diamonds made money because the Dow has been the strongest indice. But this particular one wasn't different because we added to the position because that candle had a beautiful up move the following day. So the candle of the 20th at 30,635 gave a nice signal the next day. Following day, green candle couldn't get above the nine, the pink nine period moving average and finally did and we've been adding. And we've actually taken a little bit off because uh, just uh, quick profits like that, you want to keep, but we've kept the core of that. We've got the core from way back uh, at the uh, from April of 2020, still got a core position long there. Now, that's one thing. So the other is, so that was the question, why? And the reason was I, there, were, there were candles that had worked. And if this one worked for the fifth time, but this time was a lot more successful, then we get a much stronger and longer pullback. The DOG, which is the DOG is the inverse one to one on the Dow, went to 36.65 in leg D in the Chapman Wave methodology. Since this is Technical Friday, I will take some time here. I'll show you the technical technical aspect of this if I can get it. Uh, there it is. Now, just to click on it there. In the Chapman Wave methodology, you try to identify the lowest low bar. Then count each successively higher peak. Your objective is go to get an upgrade from a buy signal to a buy mode. That implies that there should be at least four higher peaks, peak A, alphabetized, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down. As that at D, that other things can happen, it can recycle. That's where sometimes you get the, the biggest move to the downside. Um, but that's where you can also recycle within three bars if there's another new high. Maybe even make a brand new buy signal to buy mode. All right. And I've said peak D is where the expectation of a buy mode. That's where other things can happen. And that said, Together with the SH, which is one to one short, typed in the wrong place. SH, which is one to one short, the S and P. We got a peak D, 
uh, with an alternate count. Um, and that's it at 16.54. That S&P um, short position should now pull back sharply from the peak D. And that's what we're getting. All right. With that said, so we, I, I wanted to complete that. And I also wanted to talk about using my technical indicators. So in the Dow, um, you see this rising blue on balance volume? It was way better. And I did this on, on air the other day. I, I showed you, well, going back to the high that was made back in end of March, I said that high at 35,372 was way technically stronger than the next high, which was higher in the cup formation at 35,492 on the 21st of April. And therefore, we should get a pullback and we could go even more than one to one to the downside. Well, that was a weak vertical test. And we did pull back. This was a strong vertical test. The, the, the low of the, well, I think it was the 12th of May, um, was much weaker than the low of the 20th. So a whole bunch of things came into play. And that's, that's, that's one of the reasons why. That doesn't mean to say that we've gone from a buy signal to a buy mode. And now we're going back to all-time highs. It just says you've got the turn. And this is the first time, look, when we went with this Chapman Wave Roman candle of the uh, at 32,272 late April, we had a big green candle and then an inside bar, another inside bar, and then a slightly higher peak B, and then it failed. And then it had to start a brand new move that went to peak D. And then that failed. So this is the first time we've had a successive, no matter what happens today, we've had higher highs since the low of 30,635 going to 32,930. People say to me, so another question came in, how come you always talk about the Dow? And it's 30 stocks and you've got the S&P 500, you've got the NDX 100, you've got the composite index, which is 2000, and you never talk about the New York Stock Exchange. I don't because for some reason I'll have to call Trade Station. I don't know if they even have the new, I, I couldn't get it, I'll ask them, and I, if they have it, I'll do it. I don't need it necessarily in the New York Stock Exchange. Very few people actually trade New York Stock Exchange. Um, so uh, I, I've got the Wilshire, I've got many others. but. I don't feel I need it right now. But this is the first time that we've got one, two, three, four, five successive higher highs. That is really important. Okay, so I'm finished with that. And now the question is, where do you think this will go? Will this go to a, get upgraded to a buy? Well, it's 63%. I really need the stochastic to get over 80% to go to a buy mode. But the buy signal can come in if maybe Tuesday there's a bit of a pullback and then Wednesday or Thursday we go to higher highs. But in the meantime, back at the ranch, this is a leg A, gray leg A in the weekly chart, first one we've had in a long time. And um, I'm watching that monthly chart. I don't believe this is the move that's going to take us to the to all-time highs, but I think it's in the process, this whole rotation. All right, got that, that out of the way. Um, the QQQ, um, very strong, up 6.17 today and 3.06. It's really hard for me to even talk about it. We missed by 6 cents getting the exact low yesterday to buy the tiki. We've had it before, but I wanted that. Yeah. You know, I may as well talk about this because this is part of many of you do this, I'm sure. Uh, I'm not the only one. I human nature is human nature, so I'm sure we all do this. I had all typed up an entry into the three times long the queues yesterday. And the one was to go right in it at that particular point. And then if I was wrong, I wanted to buy it much lower down. I'll talk about it when we get back. It's all awesome. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. take too much time but this is a, a lesson a, a, one of the many lessons that gets repeated sometimes and this is that I had written it up typed it up to get into uh, the no matter what the price was at the open in the TQQ, TQQ which is the Q's three times long uh, because I felt strongly that we were about to make some kind of a reversal and that's going to play catch up uh, but instead what happened is, and, and then add and lower down and at least we get one position Instead, at the last minute, I changed it. Maybe it's just arrogance thinking that I know better than the market. Never do that. And I put to buy it at, uh, to buy the um, the TQQ uh, at 20, under 27.63. Now, I haven't heard from anyone. I, I, for some reason, I had to shut my computer down just earlier. I didn't even have a chance to do anything. And I was like 9.30. 9.31, I'm back, everything's up again, and I couldn't get all the pre-9.30, I had the 9.30 time till about 9.20, but that's where the queue suddenly dipped, the NQ suddenly had a little slide. So I don't know if anybody got it beforehand, nobody's told me yet that they've got it, but 27.63 was the number that I, I said to, go, to buy under. 27.68 was the exact low. So by five cents, and then what did it do? The TQQ right now. So that would have been in the 27s, and here we are. And, and, and funnily enough, I had 27.83, uh, and then suddenly at the 27, yeah, 83, and then suddenly I changed it. Just, so um, it's at 32.44. I mean, that's up about, uh, now it's today alone, it's up 7%. Yesterday it was up 8. So these things happen. Uh, I, I'm... I'm upset, and this this thing has a target of uh, the, the chain weight inside wedge target resistance line over the next few days. Maybe it can get to 33.90 to 34.20, um, and then we'll have to assess where what happens next. Just on a very short-term basis, let me just tell you here that um, this is these rectangle formations. I hope that some of I, I've spent a lot of time now thinking, you know, because. When I came to TFNN back in 2022, I met with Tom uh, in about September, I think it was, 20, did I say 20, 2002, I met with Tom 
and uh, in New Hampshire, and we're sitting, and I had my computer out, and we're talking, and I showed him something, and I said, uh, I think we can get a cell signal. I didn't do anything, and then I suddenly looked, and I said, oh, peek out from the Chapman wave. I think we're going to turn down, and we kept talking, and we looked, and then I don't remember if it was the E-mini or whatever it is, had a sharp pullback, and that's when he said, hey, you want to come do, do work work with us at TFN? And I said, if, if it's educational, and uh, if, I, if I can discuss things on a purely technical level, absolutely. So um, to, I think 20, 2003, March, I think, is when I started with my opening call. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning this is the rectangle formation. Just look at this. This is after such a spectacular couple of days. The E-mini at... 1320, that's 120 yesterday on the 26th, that's yesterday afternoon, goes from 4073.25 to a low of 4041. So 30, that's it sounds big, but it's a 30 point range after all of that spectacular move to the upside. And it holds it from 13.20 on the 26th of, of May to the breakout at 8.50 a.m. on the 27th. This is a 10-minute chart. You, you can tell how many bars there are, right? And it had peak ABCDE, ABCD, and then it pulls back, and now it's in leg D once again with a breakout. And I wouldn't be surprised if just within about... 10 or 15 minutes of another little digestive phase. Um, this is now the 10-minute chart. And there's a lot that I wanted to discuss. I said I'll do a lot of technical stuff today. So let me, let me just do this because I've got questions that I needed to answer. And the only reason why, uh, some, yeah, why is, it, why is your one-minute chart a GC instead of being definitive as a C? And the reason is that I'm looking at this and it's got the rectangle formation. There's nothing wrong. It's still walking the nine period moving average. And yes, this becomes a D. So I had the alternate count. I didn't have to do anything. It's just from my own knowledge. I don't have to act on it. I'm just being warned that this is maybe getting a little toppy, but the MACD is good. The MACD is just okay. That's the reason why. But look, this is for those of you who use the MACD, moving average convergence, divergence. Look at this divergence between Right there at about 9.50, you start to go down. The stochastic starts to slide. But look at this beautiful 9 EMA that keeps you in the trade. So that's really important. So these are the technical things. Leg E in the in the 5-minute, leg D uh, leg D in the 10-minute, uh, also with technicals. But the on-balance volume in the 5-minute is saying, oops, I'm getting a little bit overbought. So it doesn't mean to say you're going to go crazy and short and all that. It's just now you've got to be a little bit careful. This is where you could get some kind of a turnaround, big D in the daily. And you can see this little chart right here. The five-minute has Chapman automated 412700 um, resistance. Well, we'll watch it, okay? So Technical Friday question came in uh, in the Tiger YouTube. Uh, Basil, I would like to buy Dell. Now, I haven't looked at Dell in a long time. In a two-part process, it filled the down gap and now has a big up gap in leg B. At what price uh, could I enter? So let's do this. I think I'm going to suggest what I didn't do yesterday for the queues. Um, no, I'm not. I'm going to just look at this very carefully. I haven't updated this for ages. 61.54 was the high about, about um, mid-February of this year. Peak F, the Doji candle, the Chapman Wave Silent Doji. If you've done my webinars, one of them was based on this Chapman Wave Silent, wave, silent Doji. You know how you can scan? Uh, you can, they, I haven't done this for ages, but I think it was big charts once I used to use that as a scan for Doji candle, turnaround candles. Well, this is the turnaround of the turnaround. You get the one, but you've got the other. And I call it the Silent Doji because it either happens on the left side or the right side of a potential high or low. And that's usually a clue to say, it's an indecision session, and the direction of the next move up or down is going to be really important. So, yes, it turned down very sharply. So now it's gone from a low of about 38. Let's call it 38.60 for the moment, and it had a high today of 52.60. These, you know, when you make lows and you talk about um, uh, 
prices going from 500 down to 86 or whatever it is, that's not the issue. It's the issue if you're long and you're holding. But the real issue is the spectacular gains you get off the low. That's the reason why I love to try to get the, the turn, the actual turn. Look, we've got the Dow at virtually the low. Uh, the equivalent of uh, we, uh, three, the first position, the newest, latest, is at 315.79. Let's call it 31,500, right? And the down right now is at 32,895. We got a huge cushion. And we're taking a little bit off and we're going to put a little bit back on. Um, but we've got this cushion and that's what you want. So now with down, you don't have the cushion, but it went right to the 200 period moving average. It popped over it, and now it's pulling back. It's up 5 at 49.20. But look at this, 38 to 52, a 47, what is that, 46% gain in, in five days, six, six days. Uh, unbelievable. I'll be back with you about that, and we'll also talk about the brokers. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Hi, folks. Uh, so I, I, I've uh, got this Dell chart. I haven't updated it to the latest uh, uh, daily. I've got it uh, 4136, 4154. That's what you needed. So this is peak A. Uh, and I had drawn all this in, but I just haven't updated it for ages. So what we're looking at here, this is a gray A in, in the weekly chart. Gray A. Why is it gray? Because I haven't got any real signals yet until I confirm. I call it gray, um, and that's just the way it is. A huge move from the uh, 61.54 high to the 38th low, and this is still, I believe, I'm going to call it at least for now, leg A to the downside. Uh, that's okay. So what would I do? I don't like this gap. A gap of 44 points from yesterday, let's call it 43-something, 
uh, going 43 to 52 in one day. Um, this is really tough. Now, if you if you love the stock, if you've done your homework and you really love the stock, then the only thing I can recommend, I'd prefer that you, I know that you do options. I'd prefer that you bought uh, and first of all, I'd just do an out of the money call option because the option today, the May, right? I wouldn't do May, April, May, June. I'd go to June. I wouldn't go later than June. So today's high is 52.60. If there is a 52.50 call, I'd take some of that and I'd go to, to June. Why? I, I, you know what you're going to lose if everything, even if it doesn't get from, uh, even if it gets to only 51, you're going to lose all of it by, by June if you haven't taken profits at any point. If it goes even a penny above today's high, I think they'll start to increase that premium a lot even though it's way out into June. Now, this is what I'm really looking at. It would be June the uh, 17th. But really what I'm looking at is the amount that it gapped up and the amount that it's given back under the 200 period moving average. I have a terrible time with something like this where you've, you've taken, you realize that today's high almost filled the gap going from the most recent high at peak D on the 29th of March at 55.30, six points away from the all-time high. And this is incredible. So if you do like it, why not just step in with a, with a, you can even do this. It's at 49, 47 right now. You go to a 50 and the premium on the 50 must have come way down. And if it drops even another 30, 40 cents, that premium will shrink even more. That might be the best way to do it because all it has to do is pop to the 50.59 200 period moving average and you, your premium is coming back again. I, that's the only way I would do it. Now, do I like the chart? I think it's a great company. If you look at the Dell Computec uh, DELL trading at 49.44 up 5.53 having hit 52.60 earlier on. Oh, let me do this. Let me do this. Now you're looking, you're looking out, and you want to add to it. So I, I, I'm not going to do anything like uh, near term right this very minute. But I'm going to say it made a peak A, the peak B, and that is a C. Uh, is that correct? Forty-one sixteen, forty-one. Very good. A B C D. This has made a peak D in the 120 minute chart, and it's starting to pull back in this tremendous support at forty-six point fifty-three. That's what you need to know because uh, what if this is just a one-day wonder? Um, a lot of the one-day wonders tanked afterwards, but over the last two days, they've not. Let's just look at Ulta, Ulta Beauty. And I, this, I'm also upset with this one because I was in Target just a couple of days ago. And I'm looking and I'm saying, wow, look at that. They've got an Ulta inside Target. And look at all those people. And look how beautifully they've done it up. I bet this is going to do well. And it, it, it gapped up the next day, and today it gapped up again. It's at 4.13. See, this is very different. Look at the look at the monthly chart, G slash C. We saw that in the one-minute chart of the E-mini. G slash C went to that D. And now, you, now you've got to be careful. So there's a chance that Ulta Beauty, different product altogether. I'm talking about chart patterns with gaps up. This is very different. This is a really successful one. Here, I would say to start a position at 4.13, and then put another position in 398, hopefully not even getting it because it just keeps going. Dell's very different. It's in the area. It's tech. tech. Uh, no, I'm having a tough time. The only way I can say is let me do some homework over the weekend. Let's see where it closes. If it closes back over 51, that's really good today or even Tuesday. But if it doesn't, it pulls back today. I'm having a tough time at this gap up level. If it was yesterday, I'd say to you, hey, absolutely start a position. And let's see what happens tomorrow. <laughs> well, tomorrow came and earnings must have been fantastic yesterday. So all I can say, sorry, I can't do anything more than say, think about an option, call option, and let's look at it again in a little bit more detail. Will this gap ever be filled in this environment? I think this gap is going to be filled. I think the 47, 46 area could be touched at some point. So, and if it breaks that, then there's a big problem. No, sorry. Next question I had was... Um, 
And Mimi wants to go through ERF. ERF, I think we've done this before. I've got it notated. Yes. This is a brand new buy signal to buy mode. Um, now, you don't tell me whether you are going long. Yes. So this is, why did I not write that in? Ena Plus. Oh, Ena Plus uh, Corporation. Yep, that's in the same energy sector that I've been looking at. And uh, I like very much, in fact, we, we were looking at one. I did not get it, but yes. So this made a new recovery high in the monthly chart leg. E, this is a new breakout. Now we can talk about this as a potential Chapman wave inside. No, sorry, Chapman wave. There we go. Chapman wave restart. Look, that's an instant restart. Peak E slash A, F slash B pulls back. And from that low, this is still another A, B, and this could be a C. This is an R. This is a an F slash B. Yes. So I, I'm going to say that I like it very much. Now, the big problem is that, oh, I got a, a lowercase. It should be, this is a G, a G slash C. I like it very much. Now, this is what, now this is different to what we were looking at in Dell. This is in the sector that's on fire. This is the sector that's doing really well. On a very short-term basis, I can say to you, Mimi, yes, start a small bit right here. It is in leg C, probably a peak C today, and that should go to a D, and then there's a chance that it does some kind of a pullback, but the stochastic is a 91%. That's great. MACD, yes, uh, thank you, EKS and the Dan. Uh, MACD is a series of moving average trend-following momentum indicator that shows the relationship between two moving averages of a securities price. And I like, I use the MACD in a specific way for years and years and years. I like this, so I'm saying start your position. I wouldn't get too carried away, start your position. Where would I add? Let's see if it goes to D and then pulls back to, to around about and fills the gap at about 1430. It's at 1466, ERF is a symbol. But this is the most important thing. The second arch formation that's forming now in the MACD of the, of the weekly I meant the nine period over the 14 period moving average, not the, not the MACD. It says if it can remain and holds above 1380 for the next two bars, that's two weeks, and the MACD can finally cross back positive, and the stochastic can at least go from 51% to 68 or 72%, this is con going to continue as one of the sectors that is really strong. But I'd like to just say start off now at 1467. I wouldn't put a stop in. Uh, I'd have to have a wide stop. If you're prepared to do that, make it just for now a $1 stop. And we'll talk about it on Tuesday. Where would I add? Does it make a leg on Tuesday? Then you have to be careful. I'll be back. That was a two for one. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. Let me just do this. Uh, so, Anaplus, thank you, Daffy. Anaplus Corporation, energy producer, diversified portfolio, crude oil, and natural gas. A lot of these oil and gas companies are doing so well, but they, they, I think they're getting a little choppy. Let me show you. Remember the rectangle formation? I talk about this rectangle formation that can last a lot longer than your patience. But when it screams up and finally breaks to the upside and goes to a peak D, watch out. You know how many times you've looked at peak Ds and then they pull back? If it goes pulls back after that at any point in the next two weeks below 1334, the midpoint, it can go down quite a bit sharper. So I'm saying, that's the reason why I'm saying start your position and let's reassess next week. And if it does get to a D above yesterday's high of 14.83, um, let's just keep that in mind. It's in the best area, but I'm looking at crude oil. I'm looking at a lot of things saying, you know, there's a chance that we could get a pullback look, leg E out of the rectangle in the crude oil. Uh, at 114.99, uh, fabulous break to the upside. But I, I think in the 117 area, that's where you're going to see something spectacular. I think on a very short-term basis, we're getting a little bit overboard. And if that pulls back together with the, uh, the uh, wheats and grains and all that, that's something. Anyway, I wanted to discuss a couple of things. Um, number one is, I, I have discussed this some time ago, but I'm going to repeat it now. I followed the word recession ever since the 19, late 1970s. And I used to think about this as um, a recession. I, I don't care what the economists talk about a recession, usually it's two quarters of negative uh, growth. I'm just saying I, I recognize recessions. And I talk about rotational recessions. And I, I've been saying for a long time, we're in a recession. But it's very selective. It's rotating through all the different sectors. It went right through the tech sector. It went right through. It's gone through almost every single sector, even the IYT, which is holding the transports that were holding well. So when finally the, the um, economists say, we're in a recession, I don't know how many times over the decades and decades that I've been looking at this, that's the very day that you want to go long, or at least think about going long. Because they, they look at the, they re the economists have to be rear view mirrors and they look at what's happened. That's number one. I wanted to get that out of the way. Number two is I had a question about the buy signal to the buy mode uh, in the Dow. Oh, I, I've done that. Number three is mm, I had to write them down. Yesterday, this is unbelievable. I had I went to the bank, just I, I just needed to get some cash and I just stopped at the bank for a moment and I'm in the bank. And I hear a male voice, kind of middle-aged male voice, saying, uh, oh, my God, this economy, we are going into the tank. And I'm saying to myself, Geez, those are the exact words I've been hearing from so many people. And now I'm hearing at the bank. You remember when I, in 2007 when I was saying, everywhere I go in the bank, I'm, I'm hearing people talking about their mortgages and they're waiting for the house to pass and all that stuff. That was a sign of a major top. Um, I, I, dot com, you remember when grandmothers gave up their bonds and they went straight into AOL and all those companies, dot com? 
And I'm saying to myself, geez, that, that has to be a positive, surely. Um, a guy, he just, and then I, I looked around to see who he was, and I didn't recognize him, but he just looked like a regular guy. He was dressed quite nicely, so he must have come from work and just stopped there for whatever reason. And I'm saying to myself, wow, this is just, this is in the bank. I'm hearing him tell, him, tell the uh, person at the counter. So that says to me that we've got some, some endurance now to the upside, at least for a little while. Okay, that's the one thing. Number four is, um, uh, double bottoms. Uh, yeah, so um, uh, in the Jamalai in the Den, you were talking about Dell. But look at this. I don't know if this is going to work, but I am saying when I love you look at those double tops. How many, how many times throughout the weeks and weeks and weeks of two, 20, late 2021 and 2022 have I said those double tops almost to the penny are unbelievable. And look how many times you pull back. Well, look, Dallas had three bottoms. Look at the equidistance. Now, Larry's coming up in, for the next show. And he talks about, I do it in a very different way, but he talks about 135. But I, I've treated it as Chap Wave Arch goes to a cup formation in the same time form, format. Look, Dell makes a low of 68.86 on the 27th of April. On the, 20, on the 12th of May, it makes a low of 85.87. And the low three days ago is 68.85. There's your double bottom. And it's got a beautiful left side, right side price time match. This was the next thing I was going to discuss right here. Look at that. Left side, right side, equidistant, in other words, time-wise, uh, price-wise, and uh, not, uh, not price-wise, time-wise. And here we go. New parallel. Make this pink. Make that green. And it's one day late. And there it is. I, I love this. This is very nice. That's green. That's pink. Um, so, so Micron... Trading a cent to 48, up a dollar 80. At least has a pattern that says you know exactly what the rules are. You break 68 and, and close under it. That's a big problem. Leg D in the weekly chart. Uh, and, and in the uh, 120, it's only in leg C to the upside. So to me, this makes more sense of doing some constructive homework. I'm not saying go out and buy it. I'm just saying this is what I would look at. And if you look at the monthly, you remember I discussed this. I said... The high that was made at 96.96 back in mid-2021. 20, and then it pulls back to 65, 30 points. And then it rallies back up to where? 98.45. Uh, less than $2 higher uh, in January of 2022. And it comes back and now double bottoms. And it's in the rectangle formation. We might find that on a short-term basis, you could go from, from the 68s to the 74s pull back and do that a couple of times and then finally break out. Then maybe if Micron doesn't break in the next two months, close under 63, you could just be in this trading band. So that I would prefer to do the homework like that. Okay, so I've done that. Oh, Ford. Um, so Ford is up today, up 2.10%, up 28 cents at 13.39. Eiffel Tower. I was asked about this. Could you show some examples of the Eiffel Tower? Well, I had a question earlier on about from Steve Rose, have I um, been watching the French Open and have I ever been to uh, to the games there? Well, they, I believe they, I was a, um, uh, Charles Roros, Roland, Roland Garros, Gar um, the, it's the pink clay. I played in gray clay yesterday. Pink clay looks beautiful. Um, yeah, I forgot about that. I will watch the Open. But this is the Eiffel Tower. The reason why I came up with this is it's, it looks like an A. It looks like an uppercase A. You go straight up and straight down. All right, that's your Eiffel Tower. Left side, right side. Look at this beautiful price match from the low in 2021. It screams up in the same number of bars, so 35.87. Week of the 14th of January comes plummeting down. And remember, people always talk about, oh, there's always a, there's a staircase up and elevated down or whatever it is. Um, no. This I always say this, that if you look at these U-shaped formations and if you look at the V-shaped formations or arch formations, the cup or the arch, so often they have the same number of bars on the upside as on the downside. And look, here it is. So it makes a low of 12.07 on the 25th, uh, 6, uh, well, it can't be the 25th, that must have been 20. 20. 
20th. On the 20th at 12.07, and here it is, nice percentage gain, but this is gonna need a lot more work with an Eiffel Tower when you finally make that turn, you're gonna get a really strong move to like a, a moving average, in this case, the pink 14.38. But there's still a lot of work to be done. But yes, the Eiffel Tower, there's the left side, right side, price time match in Chapman Wave. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So I was asked about the ECH, which is the Chile iShares. Huge move up just in the last, since uh, mid-May. It's gone from the 24 area to 36 points. That is huge. And this is only a leg A, and it has to be considered... Uh, no, it doesn't have to be considered. It could be a continuation pattern of the uh, previous, um, yeah, from that previous up move there. So this could be an, a G slash uh, A. That's terrible. G says, oh, be careful. Everything, oh, this is going to go, it's going to really tank. And the other one says, A says, are you kidding? You want to buy everything. So I'm just going to say, I'll do a little bit more homework on this over the weekend. I did look at a couple of others, EWZ, etc. Anything that has to do with uh, raw materials. I think Chili's, this is doing very nicely. I hope you're in it. I didn't see whether or not you're in it, but yes. Um, the most important thing is I would start a position. In your position, you love longer-term outlooks. I'd start a position at 30.50, and it would be a small position. And let's reassess next week. It should have a pullback towards 29.50. That's where you would add to it. I don't think this is a G. I think this could possibly be an A. 
um, but it is really good action. And a couple of things, and I was asked about the VIX in my web in my video that I'll do for subscribers tomorrow, my, my long video that I do for the weekend um, overview. Saturday I usually do it from around, and I am, so I'll do it tomorrow. Uh, the VIX index trading at 26.39. I, I remember I said just now that we might be making just a short-term top in the E-mini because of the uh, peak D in the one-minute chart, peak E in the five-minute chart, and a peak D in the 10-minute uh, chart. I wouldn't be surprised if we, we're close to some kind of a high of the day. A nice, a nice decent pullback would be fine. I, I actually prefer it. A little sanity would be nice. So now what we're looking at is the VIX index at 26.39. It could possibly go to 27 as the market pulls back. My suspicion is if the opposite happens and it breaks under 25.50, my target for it next week is the 24s of the 200 period moving edge. So have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Long weekend. And uh, see you on Tuesday. Don't forget, Tom's got a, web a webinar coming up. Check out the front page of TFNN. And, um, and let's hope that